Hello man cavers and today we're going to do a bit more on the mini tractor. Um, I'm going to show you today two ways to get primer ready for top coat. Now if you remember last time we had primed the chassis which is here and I said off camera I was going to do the other bits. Well I've done the bonnet and the cutter deck and the seat. Now the seat, that's just going to get a nib over, that hasn't got to have a brilliant finish anyhow. So the seat will basically move to one side, because we don't want that for the minute. So that's ready to be top coated. But we do want a nice finish on our bonnet. So I ended up going with white primer on the bonnet and cutter deck. So while I was at it, I primed the engine and I went over the chassis again in white primer, not grey. So we're going over all the same colour. So as you can see, we have a little fly got in there, little swine, and there's something walked along there while the primer was wet yesterday. So I primed this as 2K primer. Um, so I'm going to show you how to prep this ready for paint. So let me get the camera set up on a tripod and I'll show you two different ways you can do it. Right, back in a second. Right, we've got set up in the tripod. First way I'm going to show you is by using a DA sander. The second way is going to be using wet and dry paper. For a start, we want a black aerosol. And you're like, what do you want a black aerosol for? You're not going to paint it black, are you? All we want to do is give it a guide coat. So you put a light dusting from a big distance. There you go. Right, that has put a slight black sheen on that. Don't put it too heavy or that'll be a job to sand off. So all this guide coat does, when you sand down, yeah, when you sand down, you know when all this black paint is gone, you've got it all. If when you dry it off, there's still bits of black mist, you'll know you haven't actually got it all. So that's instantly dry because it was literally a dust coat. So I think what we're going to do is, because this is not quite as rigid as the deck, I'll do this bit the old-fashioned way, using a bucket of water and some wet and dry paper. So, what we've got here is wet and dry paper. I'm using 600 grade. So, get a sheet, fold in half, and then in half again. So you're folding it into like thirds. Put that in your water. Let me move this bucket so you can see what we're doing a bit better. And basically, you can use a block, or if you use a flat hand, that's just as well. And basically, rub it down. I shan't edit this, then you can see in real time how long it's taken. Keep it very wet. Keep your hand very flat. Got to bear in mind, we've got a swage line along there. You don't want to concentrate your efforts too much on that swage line because you don't really want to break through your primer. But I did put about six coats of primer on this. So there is a lot of primer because there was a lot of imperfections in the metal. I did put a little bit of um, cellulose stopper in some of them. So we're just nibbing over the top of that swage line just to smooth it. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying the progress of this little machine. That will be a little beastie when that's finished. Tell you what I'll do, I'm going to just go over it all and then show you the benefit of a guide coat. I'll purposely 
missed bits so we, then I'll show you what the guide coat points out to you if you didn't put that guide coat on you'd be very unsure of where you actually were Yeah, what a job on this is. Some people don't like the preparation, but to be honest with you, anyone can spray the paint. Spraying the paint is the easy bit. It's the preparation which determines your finish. It really is. I can't emphasize enough how it's preparation, preparation, preparation. It's all prep when you come to paint. The actual applying the paint is the easy bit. But if you're applying paint over a bad area, what hasn't been correctly prepared, you won't get good results. Now bear in mind, like I keep saying, this isn't a car. We're not going for showroom finish like you'd get on a motor car because this would really look too fake. I just want it to look nice. You know, I don't want it sort of... It's going to be better than it left the factory, if I'm honest, as it is. Because they certainly wouldn't have done none of this when it left the factory. They would have just probably primed and sprayed directly over it. So, um... Oh, yeah, I meant to say... The plastic cover, what covers up the axle had a crack in it and I repaired that last night at home and when I took the little aluminium ply badge off the back which was screwed on we got a glimpse of the original colour underneath and I was wrong it isn't orange it had just faded underneath that original little um, plate what was on the back it was like a post office red so I was totally out with orange. It had obviously faded badly. I can if I remember. I'll get a video of that later. Because I forgot to bring the plastic cover down there today. I meant to bring it down to the workshop today to get it, you know, to get it prepped and primed. But I forgot the damn thing. But later on, I'll do a short video. I might tag it on the end of this video, actually showing you what the original colour actually is. Sorry if you're a bit bored here guys, but I'm showing you in real time how long it takes just to rub this bonnet down. And I want to, you know, like I said, give you a demonstration of exactly what your guide coat does. Oh, we have a mark there, right, it's gonna have to get sanded out. Right. Let me get a cloth and dry my hands. Right, now we've done this, we dry this off with a rag. And then I'll take the camera out the tripod and you can see what this looks like. And we'll hopefully see what the benefit of a guide coat does if you hadn't put that aerosol guide coat on right let me get the camera out the tripod and show you guys around this ah, here we go right here we have now this piece absolutely fine but if you look these little black marks here 
they are little low points in the primer. Now, it would be a job to see them if we hadn't put that guide coat on. So all that is, is the original, that's where that aerosol has sat in the low points and we haven't sanded it out. So, that's what there. And here, look, we've got a big mark here. Which again, that's where something walked through that in the, after I put the bloody primer on, something's got in it. So I'm going to have to sand that out. And then, give that another light going over. Until these, because I can actually feel them. Can't feel these ones up here. I can feel this one and if you don't you're going to see them through top coat it will look an eyesore and I want the bonnet actually looking half decent there's also a piece on the side here but yeah that's what your guide coat picks up so we go from this guide coat of piece you start sand and that'll go white I'm doing this bit by hand I'll show you how to do this bit with the DA so um, off camera, I'll just go over these little bits. So I don't want to bore you to tears. Some of you might want to watch how I get rid of that little mark there, actually. Because I know some of you guys might want to actually learn this instead of just, you know, some of you probably know how it's done. But if you don't, there's that little mark. So we're going to have to get our paper rolled up again and just keep sanding don't sand in one little spot or you'll just end up with a shadow now no one my luck will break through this primer hopefully we won't so I'm pretty sure I put enough of it on where we don't do that keep it in long strokes don't just go because you'll end up with a hole Keep going in long strokes. That's nearly gone, see? Yep, that one's just about gone. So is this one turn our paper over get a fresh bite and I'll actually get my finger in the ridge so we're actually going in the side of this ridge now let's come this way Just about got rid of that now. Notice how I'm doing it in long strokes though, not just in little short bits, because we don't want to leave a big imprint there. But you've got to remember the throttle plate come around here, which will cover up sort of around this area. Right, we're starting to break through that primer now, so that's as much as I'm gonna go. Come on. There. See, we're just started to go through the primer. But that's all right, we haven't broke through the X primer, so we're not through to bare metal. This is just down to that first coat of grey I put on. So, yeah, that's pretty much. So, this is the slow way of getting that mark there is now coming out. But I purposely left this end a little so you guys could see what the guide coat actually does. Try and use a flat hand. If you was doing this on a car, you wouldn't use your hand because you sometimes end up with slight ridges where your fingers have been pushing. So that's why I tend to go sideways. A lot of you know it's like this. So your hand is not flat. You actually do it sort of sideways or diagonally just so your fingers aren't making ridges you're sort of on a flat and there's a little piece right around the front here look where are we around the front there's pieces there need to 
Hope you guys are still with me. Not too bored. Yeah, we've got this little ridge here to be getting out. Look, there's a little piece there. That is just about out. There we go. What we like there now. There, that's done. There's a little bit along this bottom edge I don't like. Perfect. Let's get you guys out again. There we go. So that basically is this piece. No, it isn't. A little bit up the front here. have it this is one prepped piece of paint piece of metal catching the rag on the end piece there whatever that is now yeah, my sand is smooth whatever it was all right there we go so that really is panel wiped I mean sorry we can get this panel wiped and get that painted so now we've done this I will dry this table off get the cutter deck here and I'll show you the second way to do it back in a move right we've got our cutter deck set up in position now this is method number two now I do have a proper commercial electric PA sander, but for the purposes of this video, a lot of you guys are probably going to be at home. So I'm just going to use a cheap B&Q 30 quid orbital sander with 6 inch discs. And these again are 600, 6,000 sorry, 600 sorry, okay, I'll get the thousands right in a minute. Just put your disc on because they're hook and loop. Make sure this is bone dry. You don't need your water this time. So now, excuse the noise.
I'm doing this in real time as well, so you can actually see what we're doing. could keep on doing it but I'll just get slower so we'll put a new disc on <laughs> tell you why that is the um the only part you actually see of this are these two edges where you put your feet this line through here let me move it this way have i got a piece of wood i can use as an aid no i haven't basically this is underneath the mower and your chassis comes either side of these holes where this clip is your chassis will run here and here. So none of this piece, this middle piece, has ever seen. Hence why I haven't sort of spent too much time going around here. I mean, it's protected. It's not going to rust. These aren't bits you're ever going to see. I mean, they'll still look good, but you're never going to see them. The bit what you're going to see is this. But even this is going to have a grip tape stuck over it to put your feet on. So you don't put your feet on the paint edges as you've as you noticed i did sort of da around the edges the best i could these are natural ribs where this was where this cutter deck was pressed this is just natural ribs from the pressing i'm not going to get rid of them it's original i'm leaving them in yes i could have filled over that and smoothed them off but no i'm going to leave them original pressing marks in there with a da the electric sander do not do edges with a da because it'll like make them square, it won't round them. You'll have like a stepped edge. And it's so easy to break through. So even though you're doing it electric, you're going to have to do your detail bits wet and dry again. So on these edges here, you will need your water again. Just to do the edges. And look how quick them edges do. Edges always sand quickly. As you can see. They're coming right the way around this edge in no time at all. And just to assist things, I'll come around here as well. It does just smooth things out a little bit. But I don't want to do away with all them ridges, them pressing marks. There we go. So that basically is how you get prep. Get the panels ready for paint. There's another process. Do you want me to show you guys that as well? Show you the actual final preparation. Yeah. 
you can always forward through it if you don't want to see that. If you just want to see me spraying the paint on, I could time lapse it out, but I know a couple of you guys mentioned that you like to see it all without a lot of editing, so we're going to go musty one style here and include everything. Just do it on these edges. Because these are actually bits you will see. So. Perfect. We're starting to go through there, so that's fine. Right, there we go. So now what we need to do again now is dry this off. With a cloth and dry our table off as well and then I'll show you the color I've chosen because I did pick the color last night I actually found a tin on my shelf from when I used to be a paint sprayer I've got a couple of hundred tins of um you know, 2K paint where I've bought a litre or half a litre. And I've only used a little bit to do a patch repair on a car. And all them little bits I didn't use, I actually saved. Because you only activate what you use. So if you've got an activated paint, keep it. It comes in for something. And if you don't get a frost on it, it'll last for absolutely years. I mean, the paint I'm going to actually put on this today you'll see by the state of the tin comes from it was paint i bought in 2006 yes 2006 must have been about there because that's when i stopped working for myself so it must have been at the latest 2006 so right what we're going to do now airline we'll blow this lot off and then we'll get this panel wiped and ready for final paint back in a second right We've got our table cleared, so we're now going to just blow this table off. And we want all that dust off. Remember, cleanliness, cleanliness, cleanliness. So the table now has pretty much just got some wet on it. Give it a wipe. Wiped. We can now put our cutter deck on. Now I want this cutter deck slightly off the table, so we need something to put underneath that to hold it up. Let me get some blocks of wood. Obviously, you could use anything for this, but I'm just going to use blocks of wood. And our blocks of wood. I want an air gap under the deck, you see. So, ah, there's a ridge under there, right? I see. So that end will come on there. That end will come there. We just need to prop this end up now. Two blocks under there. There we go. Two under here. There. Now we've got a gap all the way around the bottom. So when you paint it, the paint don't sort of join up with the table and then end up sticking to the table. So we'll now do the same thing with our bonnet. We can put that bonnet here. That will be perfect. 
There we go, and we just want some around the front as well. Two more blocks, Mr. Finn. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, next thing to do, get a clean rag and then get these panel wiped because at the minute they're not panel wiped. So, but these pieces and the chassis we're going to do red today. The engine and the seat, which is behind us, is going to be white. So, they'll be done another day. At the minute, they've just got white primer on. But for today, we're going to get the red done. So, we're going to get this, that, and the chassis, which is behind us. So that's what we'll do. So let me get a clean cloth and some panel wipe and we'll get this panel wiped off. Right, we have a clean cloth. In this case, a potton, cotton, potton, cotton pillowcase. Um, when you're doing this, it's best not to use nylon or anything. So you're really better off with cotton. Wool isn't that good either because that can leave traces of fur behind. So use cotton cloth. I'll use an old pillowcase, soak that in panel wipe. Now I'm going to do away with some myths of painting here. People that say you need a spray booth to get the best results. Rubbish. People say you need a spotlessly clean environment. It's right to a degree, but see the results of this for yourself. Let me tell you something about spray booths. I had years of working for a main Ford dealer. I've also worked for a Volvo main dealer as a paint sprayer. A BMW specialist, a Suzuki dealer. And a general body shop. And a main Ford dealer which did accident repair work. Now all of them places had the top, top of the line ovens. And I'll tell you why they use spray booths and paint ovens. Number one, yes, they are cleaner. But number two, it's all down to time. When I spray this today, I won't be able to touch it until tomorrow. Because I'm letting it air dry. And it can take, you know, I mean, it'll be touch dry in a couple of hours. But certainly not dry enough to mess around with or polish. So really, you've got to leave this overnight. Body shops don't have time for that. When they do 2K paint, or even the water-based paint now, when they put it in an oven, they spray it, they set the oven for about 20 minutes at about 90, 70, 90 degrees. Switch it on, leave it. After 20 minutes, the car comes out so hot you can barely touch it, but the paint is dry. Now... There's dry and there's dry. Yes, it's dry. You can touch it, you can sand it, you can polish it. Now, the paint is dry, but it isn't fully cured. Because if you push really hard with your thumb, you can still leave a mark in it. You can still leave a thumbprint in it if you push really hard. Now, in a professional body shop, they want in and out. They want quick. They want speed. So they chuck them in an oven, bake them for 20 minutes, take them out. And a lot of the time, they'll just let the car out, or if they're really fussy, they'll flatten polish it, colour sand it, whatever you want to call it, and let it go. But, but, that also, that rapid drying time makes the paint brittle. So it's a lot, lot more susceptible to stone chips. So if you have a car sprayed in a spray booth and it's baked on that 20 minute bake cycle, that paint has been forced to dry so quick that the top layer becomes brittle. So it's really, really easy if you tap it or get a stone chip for that paint to chip off because it's been forced to dry far too fast. But with air drying, 2K paint is so durable if it's left to air dry. It's nearly as durable as powder coat. So it really is. But I mean, if you put it on right and mix it right, 2K paint is really, really tough. If it's sprayed in an oven and then baked off, it makes it brittle. So that is the downside to spraying in a booth. Have I got a clean environment? No, have I buggery? 
dusty floor. Everything around me is dusty. But I can guarantee there will be hardly any crap getting this paint. If you look up, whoop, you will see a plastic sheet on the ceiling, which I have to stop crap falling from down. But for years and years and years, I actually spray cars in this exact shed, in this exact setup. Yes, it was totally cleared out then, and all I did was spraying in it. That was before I used it as a general workshop. Because as you can see now, I mean, I've just, there's tools and bits everywhere. This didn't used to be like this. It used to be empty. Um, this is 20, I think this workshop's 26 feet long for about 18 feet wide. So it was ample room to get a car in here, get the door shut, get the space heater on and get all the way around it. But I still had a dusty floor. Yes, I have an extraction through the other side, which did draw the fumes out. But that was it. So, right, I think I need to show you guys the paint. So let's go through the other side and I'll show you the paint. Right, the colour I picked out is uh, this one. Oh, look at the state of that tin. You can see that is years old, rusty lid. But it's more than half full and that's the colour which is remarkably close to what was on there. So we'll activate this paint now. We'll put our primer out the way. We've got some thinner there, we'll use that. Here's some hardener, we can use that. So for a start, we'll get this top off. There's our lovely colour. So you've got to remember, this paint is years, years old. It must be at least 2006, because I stopped actually spraying cars for a living in here in 2006. And this paint has just been sitting on the... There's a corner shelf behind the camera. Now then, your primer is activated. Four to one. And this stuff you activate two to one. So if you notice I used the little red marks, which said four to one there. You can see the three to one on there better, I should think. But if we go round again, there's some more red marks with two to one. Which gives us our mixing ratios. So now that paint is fully stirred. No, it isn't fully stirred. There's a streak in it. I just saw pigment on the bottom. Well, it's amazing how this paint will actually keep for all them years. Like I say, it's 2021 now. So this has got to have been there at least 15 years, at least. There you go. We are just about done now. Right, now we can get this paint activated. So I'll pour this in. Two to one. Where's our two? We'll come up to... That one. If we need any more, I can always come in and mix some more up. The thing with 2K paint is, like I said before, once you've activated it, what you don't use has to get thrown away. Now, this stuff is dodgy. Um, they outlaw 2K paint. I mean, you can still buy it, but mainstream, it's not used anymore because it has some really dodgy chemicals in it. So um, be mindful of that. If you decide to get 2K paint and spray, always, always wear a mask and if you can, do it outside or somewhere extremely well ventilated. Of course, it is horrible stuff. It really is horrible stuff. So, we've put our two parts paint in there to one part hardener. 
to about 20% thinners. Yep, you hear that drop off? When you hear your paint, drop them back into the tub, tub like drips, you know it's the right consistency. Hear that? If it runs off your stick in a continuous bead, it's a tiny bit too thick. There we go. That's now done. So we're getting your spray gun ready for Gisty after the primer. Yep, yesterday after the primer, I actually cleaned the gun out and put the air cap of the gun in the in the drum. So we can now get the if you wonder what spray gun I'm using, I use a Devilbus. Of course, they are pretty much the benchmark of spray guns. You can use the cheaper Chinese ones, they aren't too bad. But the quality and the finish you can get with them, you're quite restricted, if I'm perfectly honest. They are perfect if you're doing sort of quick jobs, spraying an old tractor, or using them as a primer gun. But if you want to get a nice finish, the old adage guys you get what you pay for you really do when it comes to spray guns you do you're not buying them for the name you're buying them for the performance and the quality so but this is the cheapest possible entry level Devilbus you can get a Devilbus SLG so this is the cheapest Devilbus gun they make but believe me this is I can't remember what this gun was new I think you can get these for about £150 these guns but believe me, they are better than any Chinese gun. They really are. So, let me show you where my filter is. In here, if we unscrew the pot of this gun, you'll wonder why I don't strain the paint. Take the pot off. And if I poke... Where are we? If I get my finger in and poke... You will see... There is actually... there you go there's actually a filter see in the end look at all the crap that's picked up now if that little filter weren't in there all that crap would have got through our paint we throw that one away because there's really no point putting dirty filters back in um, let me grab a new filter and we'll get that put in so our new paint filter has been put in the end. We'll just screw the gun cut back on. And I'll also go belt and braces and show you what paint strainers are as well. In case you're interested. So we'll put our gun in its holder. And I'll show you what a paint strainer is. So if I come in my little envelope here. I have got in here paint strainers. These are like funnels that are a really fine mesh. 250 microns. That's what this mesh is in the bottom there. That is extremely fine mesh. Now it's fine enough for your paint to go through. But it's too fine for any crap to go through. So sit that on the top of your gun. And then we can tip our colour. I'll do it left handed. Into that paint strainer. There we go. And that's a double layer. So any crap what's in your paint. Dirt, rubbish. All gets. Caught. In that paint strainer they are single use obviously them paint strainers once you've used them you can't reuse them again so they had it so we'll get back through the workshop 
get this color on so we're back on <clears throat> if you can't hear me i'm a bit muffled because i do have a mask on so that final job one final blow off with your hair on just blow any final bits of dust and rubbish off there because believe me you don't want dust and rubbish I'm just blowing the shaft off behind you So now we just plug in the old airline. Do some adjustments, dial your gun in. Now I don't have to look at the air pressure on my gauge because I can hear when that's right. There we go. This dial here, that's called the um, nozzle adjustment or the fluid tip adjustment, flow adjustment. This one determines how much paint comes in and out. What this basically does is, the more you screw this in, the first stage of your spray gun is always air look. So there's air there, but no paint. Your paint don't start until you do that second bit. Yeah. And the more you come in, the more paint is pushed out. If you screw that right in, this won't come in much, so you'll only get a little bit of paint. Now, if you're a beginner, it's ideal to use that, because then that stops you putting the paint on too thick. But pro painters, they tend not to sort of use them too much, because we sort of judge it where it needs to be. We get the feel for it. The worst thing, another thing, beginners do like when my dad for argument's sake try and spray paint he lets the trigger go every time never do that always keep your air flowing and just release your paint flow yeah it'll make it for a lot smoother and it'll avoid splatter turning the air down a bit all right let's get a coat on we want a dust coat to start with This colour is covering really well. Right, that basically is a dust coat. Don't put any more than that on at the minute. That's just a light coat which will go on to help things adhere. So let me move the camera up and we'll do the chassis. I was going to point out to you actually before I start this. I did put the bolts in there the other day if you remember. But I said I was going to leave this bolted in. That isn't going to work so we need to take this actually out to paint it. So I've got to lift this out because it weren't going to work doing it how I had it, actually in situ, it just weren't going to work. I thought about it, so if we move our chassis over, we can get both these pieces on this jig to spray. There we go. So both them pieces are on there. There we go. Oh, sorry, this didn't need a lot of preparation because it's the chassis, so it'll be fine. 
Oh, I have given it a light key with a scotch bright. Right, that is our first coat on everything. Now we should be about right to put our second coat on. How you test? Find an area that's not um, going to be seen and just touch. There you go, that is virtually touch dry. There's none coming off on my finger, so we're ready for another coat. And this coat we can put on a little bit heavier. But not too heavy because you don't want to get a run. There's our second coat. What I'll do is I'll stop the camera here guys because it's just drying time now and I'll come back when um, we give it the third coat. Back in a minute. So guys, coat three is on and our bits are done. So let's have a look around them. There we go. There is the finish we've got. I mean, I didn't spend so much time getting the cutter deck right. This bonnet, though, is beautiful. Look at that. That is the paint finish. What you get in a filthy, dirty workshop. You'll see it better once that's outside. But that is, there is no shit in that. There's no dirt in it. It's like a sheet of glass. Let's have a look at our chassis. Walk slowly around it because you don't want to create a lot of dust and crap that's going to go in it. But here's our chassis. And our gearbox chassis is here. 
There's our gearbox chassis with our gearbox. There we go. And this paint will be insect hardy, let's say, within about half an hour, because it's very warm today. It's about 24 degrees, I'm guessing. So, um, yeah, within about half an hour, this will be tack dry, which means if a fly or anything lands in it in after about half an hour, it's not going to mark the paint. It will just walk along the top of it. So that's basically what we've got. Yep, we're all pretty clean. Pretty good. Pretty nice finish. We'll do the engine. We'll get that white. That's just got white primer on at the minute. But obviously I don't want to spray white in here while this is still here because we'll get little white spots. But that is what... That is what you get doing a home respray. There we go. Right. I'm going to come outside and take this mask off because I hate wearing masks. Yeah, that's better. That's off. Whew, here I am again. Right. As you can see out here, it's a beautiful day today. Absolutely lovely. And... Our stuff has all been painted in there. So I'm going to leave that alone. And yeah. Clean my hands up. If not, missus is not going to be happy. Beautiful wife will be like, oh my God, what have you done to your hands? So I better clean them up. I'm not one of these fairies that wear gloves, you see. I can't be doing with gloves. So yeah, there is our red painted bits. Um, the only bit I haven't done red, which I've forgotten, is the plastic cover, which goes in here. But I, you know, I've got to prime that as well, so I will have to just do that at a later date. But everything else is all done. There we go. That is 2K spraying at home. You will not ever get this finish with a rattle can. If you're going to try and spray like this with a rattle can, um, you won't get it as good. Um, believe me, even the um, expensive spray match ones, what you get, the tailored aerosols, they don't spray as good as a spray gun, regardless of what people tell you. They really don't. I mean, this is, you know, yeah, this is the proper way to do it. And if you've got a small workshop at home, you can just have a small compressor, a spray gun and have a go at spraying yourself. You can still buy 2K paint. It's readily available on eBay even. You can order it by colour code or the colour you want. So, yeah, there you go. Right, definitely it now. Hope you've enjoyed this video and hope you didn't find it too boring. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha. <laughs>